The collapse of FTX cost, as Alison was saying, about $8 billion. It was the defining moment of the crypto winter. Bitcoin fell below $17,000. Uh, by the way, it's over, what are we today, 60-odd thousand today? All-time high. It got a big boost with the approval of Bitcoin exchange traded for ETFs. It's opened the door to more mainstream investors. A single Bitcoin, I beg your pardon, I'm looking now, it's over, it could be 70,000. The former actor Ben McKenzie wrote a book that was critical of the celebrities who endorsed it. It's called Easy Money, Cryptocurrency, Casino Capitalism and the Golden Age of Fraud. He joins me now. Uh, ben, thank you, I'm grateful. Um, uh, today's sentence, do you think the sentence fits the crime? Yes. I mean, the judge took the uh, recommendation by the prosecution, 40 to 50 years, uh, weighted against the, uh, the uh, defense, which wanted five to six, and he chose the middle, 25. Uh, Sam was convicted of seven crimes, six uh, counts of fraud of various kinds, and one of money laundering. What he was doing was uh, perpetrating one of the largest financial frauds in American history. But his defense said that he was not a financial serial killer and that he was not Bernie Madoff, in a sense. Now, you know, I mean, I don't know. Bernie Madoff made off with goodness knows how many billion. Bankman Fried, he just didn't do it in quite the same way. In, in, the, in the scheme of frauds, from Enron to Lehman to uh, Madoff, where do you put Bankman Fried? Well, I would say in terms of the size of his Ponzi scheme, which I do believe it was, essentially, uh, it's slightly smaller than Madoff's. Uh, but in terms of the size of the overall cryptocurrency industry, which is rife with fraud and market manipulation, uh, if you were talking about that as a Ponzi scheme, which I have in front of Congress, uh, that's potentially the largest Ponzi scheme in history. Let's talk about that then. Because in a sense, that that's... You know... It, it, it's a bit like tulip mania, obviously, in a sense that if that's what people are prepared to pay for an asset that is not worth anything or cannot be used, is it really that much different from gold? Well, that's a great point. And in a way, it isn't if it's regulated the same way that gold is regulated or securities are regulated, which are investment contracts, which I believe essentially all cryptocurrencies are or should be classified as. We have rules in this country and around the world for how people are able to sell you on investments. And to your point, if there is an investment in essentially nothing, then at a minimum, these companies should have to follow the law and many, many, many of them are not. Uh, we see indictment after indictment, lawsuit after lawsuit. The problem is not so much being able to buy a cryptocurrency, it's being able to sell that cryptocurrency to a willing buyer. And you see exchange after exchange uh, fall apart, you see crypto coin after crypto coin collapse, and, it, and all that's right. left are people uh, and their life savings having been stolen. Is there a difference, in your view now, between Bitcoin, which has been around for a good few years, the algorithm seems to work, assuming you don't lose your key to your wallet, and even then the ETF allows you another way. But Bitcoin has an element. You might launch yourself out of your chair as I say this. Bitcoin has an element of legitimacy about it. but all, and, and even some stable coins do. It's the others that don't. Yeah, I mean, we've had we've heard arguments uh, of that nature for quite a long time. Uh, in the last few years, it was this or that cryptocurrency that wasn't a scam, or this or that cryptocurrency that wasn't, and then they would fall, and a stable coin would turn out to be not so stable. Uh, one of them collapsed in 2022, which precipitated the collapse of Sam's right. empire. In fact, it was right. called Terra Luna. So I think you know. Look, I, I take your point, but honestly, if you get beneath the sort of the, the code and you get into the actual markets, they're deeply corrupt, deeply uh, uh, they're full of fraud. Right now, I'm not saying it's fraud. Let me my last question, and you can file this away as the mischievous question, just to mm. to be provocative. Um, I'm not saying fraud. Please, let's be clear about that. But if we're talking about economic reality and regulation. Is Donald Trump's Truth Social new SPAC vehicle worth billions?
but has no revenues to speak of, loses money and is not really a worthwhile investment. Where would you put that in the great scheme of things? Well, I would say this. The book I wrote, Easy Money, uh, it's cryptocurrency, it's casino capitalism, turning all of our economic capital markets into the equivalent of casinos, and it's the golden age of fraud. And I think no one better embodies the golden age of fraud than our former president, sad to say. Well, I'm grateful to you for joining us tonight. Thank you, sir. We'll talk more about this. It's a fascinating discussion. Uh, thank you.